a stormy spring day, we observed a bee swarm in our backyard. Knowing little about the behavior of bees, I wanted to see how a swarm handles the inclement weather. I figured when they were completely soaked was the best time to get close to the hive, since I assumed they would be able to fly in the thick rain. The bees were soaked, and so was I. My lens was wet, and thus the camera was having some difficulty focusing. The water also interfered with the touchscreen, and stopped the video several times. The bees were completely exposed to the storm. While the branch they chose to swarm on was moderately sheltered, the weight of the bees themselves and the rain caused it to droop and thus completely exposing the bees. Soaked or not, I would not recommend getting this close to a bee swarm. Swarming bees are somewhat docile as they do not have a hive to protect, but they can defend their swarm if provoked. Also, depending on your location, you may have Africanized honeybees, which are much more aggressive. I did get stung a few times. However, I make videos for the internet, and thus I have creative license to do dumb things like stick my camera inside a bee swarm. Africanized honeybees, or killer bees as they are often called, not the African honeybee, which is the ancestor to the Africanized honeybee, are not natural. In the 1950s, biologist Warwick Kerr crossed strains of the African honeybee with various European bees. The result was a productive, but highly defensive bees. These bees were unintentionally released by a visiting beekeeper. When we call the Africanized honeybee either a nuisance or invasive, it is important to observe that we made this. I expect to observe the clustering behavior where the bees exercise the flight muscles while in a tight formation to generate heat. While wet, most of the bees appeared to be stationary. Perhaps they were clustering more towards the inside of the swarm. After all, their primary objective is to keep the queen warm. This is a bee swarm, meaning they are part of a hive that became too large and it split. To do this, a queen lays eggs into queen cups that were previously built by workers. In preparation for moving, the queen stops laying eggs as she is too heavy for long flights when rearing. The worker bees also gorge themselves in honey at this time. When the new queens hatch, the old queen and about 60% of the workforce leave the hive and form a swarm nearby. The swarm is only temporary. They can remain for several hours or several days, sometimes longer depending on weather conditions. If you encounter a swarm, it is best to leave them alone unless they are a danger to themselves or others. If the bees need to be removed, please call a beekeeper and not an exterminator. Our friendly beekeeper removed these at no charge and even offered to bring us some honey. Depending on location, availability, and risk, there may be a charge for this service. Please note this is in regards to bee swarms, not hives. Hives are usually enclosed and harder to reach and the bees are more apt to defend themselves and their hive. There are a few links below with resources to find a local beekeeper. This is a temporary location for the bees, and scouts are actively seeking an optimal permanent location. When a new location is found and agreed upon, a max exodus will occur. Moving the bees was remarkably non-eventful. Our beekeeper wears a suit to keep bees from getting under his clothes and out of his face. I got stung when a bee got under my shirt. I then flinched my camera, which further disturbed the bees, and flailed like an idiot, which further excited the bees. The best bee advice is to remain calm, even if stung. If you flail around, they are likely to give chase. Now for some bee removal and more knowledge from a bee expert. Okay, there's two. Yep, I see them. Are you ready? Um, so go ahead and cut one. No, they're probably going to be on some other. Um, Are there these two here, down lower? Right here, Mary Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay, don't cut anything else yet. I see one more. Okay, don't cut it. Um, no, this is good. Yep. This is 90% of them, so she's probably in here. Uh, this 
several more branches with the water in the Yeah, it'll be the king Yep. So what we're going to do... You want me to cut that? No, nope, here's what's going to happen. This is what takes place at the door here. And as soon as... There's already bees lining up the fan. So they're sending out the queen scent. But they're not sure the queen's in there. They just know there's a lot of queen scent. So what they're going to do... There's a pile of bees, probably a pound of bees, right here on the gate that fell to the side. Uh, so, if we see bees start to swarm in there, we know the queen's in there. Uh -huh. Unless she's if we, there. If we see them start here, we know that she's there. The bees will go back there. So, if we see them starting to swarm over here, now look, some will go there because her scent is still there. There's, yeah, this will still, it's okay. Oh, oh they're not happy now. Big one? It's just they're so intertwined. You're supposed to let me answer before you do that. Want me to get the other one? Nope. Don't cut anything yet. Everything else I'll do from this side. You want the cutter over there? Not yet. Well, these seem to be hanging here pretty good, don't they? Yeah. For me, I'm going to take this top off just because there's so many bees. There are a lot. Maybe they'll, um, I think they're re swarming on that one branch over there. They will. No, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And we're just going to give them, they're doing exactly what they should do here. Do you want another box for that? No, but can I have the cutters? Yeah, you got it. Others, others. Thank you for watching. I hoped you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. This was a one-off video for us and a break from our usual cold starts and cooking channels. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you would like to see more content like this.